Hello and welcome to this week's Messy Open the Book. We continue with our stories in which children play their part. And this week's story has a wicked queen and a hero prince. And it's called Snatch to Safety. Reverend Helen today is going to be doing our craft and she's doing some sugar marbling, um, which sounds really quite interesting. Um, hopefully that will go well. And she's going to sing for us as well. Jesus' love is very wonderful. So I do hope you've all had a good week and we'll have our craft first. Well, hello. In a moment, we're going to hear our story about a little boy called Joash. And he is hidden away. So I've been trying to think of a craft. Uh, a craft that maybe looks at spreading about how far you can reach if you want to, even though you might be very small. So I've chosen to do what we call sugar marbling. Now, this one is a bit messy. I've got to say, don't do this in your best clothes and don't do this on a nice clean tablecloth or anything like that. Better off doing it in the garden or certainly at the kitchen table. Maybe put some newspaper down on a floor or something like that because it can make a little bit of mess. So be careful. Now, again, you should be able to find some of these things in your house. Uh, there's some icing sugar. Most cupboards have that now. I bet you've made lots of cakes during your time at home. So you should be able to find some nice, fine icing sugar got some of that and this is some white wine vinegar now white wine vinegar is the best sort to use just because it doesn't make your icing sugar a funny color but if you've only got normal malt vinegar uh, any vinegar would do but it just means that it won't look clear it means that it might be a little bit brown but you'll still be able to get the same effect so we need some icing sugar and some white wine vinegar. And what we also need is some food coloring. So not only is this messy because of icing sugar, which is very sticky when you mix it with something wet, but also we are going to use food coloring and that can stain. So be careful with the food coloring and you don't need very much at all. So just remember that when you use it. I'm gonna put those to one side now i also have a piece of card and i was thinking you know a cereal box or anything like that would do um it doesn't really matter just a piece of card um thick paper something like that would be great so in this bowl i have mixed just with a teaspoon some icing sugar and some white wine vinegar and it is actually it's quite syrupy it's sort of it's not too watery but there there is um a sort of a, a, a drop to it so you want it so that it falls off the spoon like that you can always add a bit more vinegar or a bit more sugar depending on how thick it is but make it nice and thin enough to paint onto your piece of paper so i'm going to put the teaspoon to one side and i have a kitchen brush here this is the brush i use sometimes to put egg on pastry or something like that um, and i'm just going to paint my piece of paper with my liquid vinegar and sugar now again be careful because splashes and things like that will really make everything around you a little bit sticky no flicking it at your brother or sister because everything will be a sticky mess now there's my white wine and sugar wash now you might just be able to see that on the paper I've painted it on if I was using a different colour vinegar it wouldn't look so white but actually you don't really want to see it you just need it to be painted onto the paper because then the fun bit starts you get your food colourings my red 
and my green. Now I've tried this before and I have got one to show you because it changes when you take time. But I found that the red one seems to work better than the green. I don't know why, but it does. So I've got a just a, um, a skewer. You could use a cocktail stick or anything that you can dip into your colouring. I've got some red here. Get a little bit of colouring. As I said, you really don't need much. You do not want to pour this on. You only want to drop it. And you allow the drops to go onto your icing sugar and your white wine wash. And can you see what's starting to happen? I'm going to do a few more drops on there. Maybe one more over here and one more over there. I'm just going to give my skewer a little wipe. And then I'm going to dip it into the green one. You haven't got to have green and red. This just happens to be what I had in the house. And again, I'm going to do a blob of green there and maybe one there. The green doesn't seem to spread quite so much. But can you see what's happening, especially to the red? Put a few more drops of green on. One there, one there. Let's see if we can top that one up a bit. There we are. Maybe one there. There we are. Can you see what's starting to happen there? I'm just going to put the lids back on my food colouring because the last thing you want to do is spill them. Our drops of colour are starting to spread out and make a much bigger pattern, almost like a, a marbling pattern. And when you do it and you look close, you can see that they're starting to spread out like little fingers on a page. Now, I did make one earlier. It's still a, a little bit wet. The sugar is still drying. But can you see what's happened there? The colours have started to spread. And that tiny, tiny little drop at the end of your skewer or your cocktail stick has spread it's followed the vinegar and the sugar and it started to cover almost the whole picture. Let's see what mine's doing underneath. You can see how that one's starting to go as well. And you can just leave them. You could try a little bit more or you could try some different colours. But, you know, it's, it's really just recognising that that tiny drop can reach much further than you think it's going to. And we'll hear about Joash in our story in a moment who was hidden away for a long, long time. But when he finally, when he finally got released, even a small boy could have far reaching effects. And that you will hear about in our story. So our sugar marbling really demonstrates that a very small drop can go a very long way. Give it a go. It's great fun. It smells amazing, but it's very messy. So check in with your adults first. Enjoy your sugar marbling. Snatch to safety. Queen Italia swept through the land with a dagger in her hand. No one shall live, she cried. No one shall live who can take the throne from me. All the king's children must die. And that, of course, meant Prince Joash. He was only a baby. And so he can't really remember being rescued from death. But he was told how the queen stormed through the front doors of the palace and his aunt grabbed him from the cot and escaped through the back door. She ran fast all the way to the temple, where she hid him in a secret room, and she hoped that the queen would never find him. Six long years, Queen Italia ruled the country. They were dark and difficult times. Good people were treated badly, and bad people were treated well and prospered. Six long years, Prince Joash was hidden in the temple, and he learned 
as he grew up to play very quietly and laugh softly and be very careful about who saw him. Not that the Queen ever came to the temple. She wasn't interested in worshipping God or following his laws. She was just interested in doing evil and she had lots of spies to help her. One day, when Prince Joash was seven years old, his uncle, who was a priest in the temple, came and saw him. Joash, he said, I have a plan to save the people from their misery. I'm going to crown you king of Judah, and so to end the rule of the wicked queen. It was a brave but dangerous plan, because the queen was very, very powerful and ruthless. She had a band of desperate men who would kill at her command. But Joash's uncle knew there were still some good soldiers about who would be happy to protect the new king. He had secret talks with the commanding officers and they promised to protect King Joash. And they came up with a cunning plan to outwit the queen. They would make sure on the day of King Joash's coronation, not just one platoon of soldiers, or even two, but three platoons of soldiers would guard the temple. On that chosen day, Joash's uncle took him from his hiding place and made him stand at the entrance of the temple, in front of everybody, put a crown on his head and shouted, Joash, I crown you king of Judah. Everyone cheered, everyone clapped, everyone shouted, long live the king. The queen's spies ran to tell her straight away, but when she arrived, she couldn't get through. Her way was barred by three platoons of soldiers, all with their swords pointing towards her. Stop, shouted the commanding officer. You cannot come in by order of King Joash, the new king. She was in such a temper. She stamped her feet and shouted treason. She jumped up and down and screamed traitors. She even tore her clothes and was so furious. But she knew she was beaten. Her evil rule had come to an end. And now King Joash was on the throne. And he knew he would follow God's laws and be a good king. Sometimes in this life we can see that evil people, bad people seem to be doing well and good people seem to be struggling and it seems unfair and it is. But that should never stop us from doing the right thing. God has given us rules and guidance so that we may be better and live better lives together. So let's just take a moment as we think about maybe things that we haven't done as well as we should have done. Dear God, please help us to do what is right, to be good and do good for others, this day and always. Amen. So, time for our song together. And I know you've sung this one with me before. It's one of my favourites. It's called Jesus' Love is Very Wonderful. So we do, Jesus love is very wonderful and wonderful because it's all encompassing, Jesus loves us all. So we do a big round, Jesus love is very wonderful. We do that again, Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Oh, wonderful love. And that's our sign for love. You could do that if you want to, you could make a heart and then it's, so high you can't get over it so low you can't get under it so wide 
you can't get round it. Oh, wonderful love. And we'll sing that through twice. Are you ready? Jesus love is very wonderful. Jesus love is very wonderful. Jesus love is very wonderful. Oh, wonderful love. Ready? So high. Up on your tiptoes. You can't get over it. So low. Right down. You can't get under it. So wide. You can't get round it. Oh, wonderful love. And again. Jesus love is very wonderful. Jesus love is very wonderful. Jesus love is very wonderful. Oh, wonderful love. So high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. So wide, you can't get round it. Oh, wonderful love. Now I wonder, when I was singing that, whether or not we could do it really fast with all the action. So I'm going to speed it up a bit, see if you can keep up with me. Jesus love is very wonderful. Jesus love is very wonderful. Jesus love is very wonderful. Oh, wonderful love. Ready? So high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. So wide, you can't get round it. Oh, wonderful love. Oh, all hot and bothered now. Hope you enjoyed that. And so however you spend the week, I hope you find ways of being good and doing good for others that you may be helpful in all that you do. And so may the Lord bless and keep you this day and always. Amen. <laughs>